Welcome to SVG TV News for Tuesday, March 26, 2019. I am Yvesta Boynes with the details. A 600 kilowatt solar PV and battery energy storage plant was commissioned in Union Island yesterday. The solar plant, which carries a tax price of three million U.S. dollars, funded through a grant from the United Arab Emirates, is expected to supply energy to the entire Grenadine Island. It is said to be the largest renewable energy initiative in the Caribbean region and is expected to reduce energy costs and carbon dioxide emissions. Larissa Pugsley Kidd tells us more in this report. Residents in Union Island are to benefit from clean energy from the solar hybrid plant, which is expected to generate enough capacity to supply 100% of the island daytime power requirements. The plant, which was commissioned yesterday, was funded by the United Arab Emirates under its Abu Dhabi Fund for Development, ADFD. The St. Vincent and the Grenadines Electricity Company Limited, Vinlec, also played a critical role in development of the hybrid plant, which is designed to withstand up to 160 miles per hour winds and extreme weather conditions. Chief Executive Officer of Vinlec, Thornley Myers, said it is something that the residents and all Vincentians should be proud of. And there is a manage, an energy management control system that will determine at each point of the day whether you get energy from your solar panels, whether you get energy from the batteries, or whether you get energy from the diesel generators. All happening automatically. Representing the UAE at the commissioning ceremony was Ambassador Bader al Matrushi, who spoke more on the magnitude of the project undertaken by his country. The plant will meet over 30% of the Union Island's energy needs and displace 320,000 liters of diesel fuel each year, saving the island about 368,000 USD and offsetting an impressive 825 tons of carbon annually. As Union Island's first utility scale solar plant, the project also sets a regulatory precedent for using renewable energy to drive to drive down energy costs in, an, in the outer islands. The project started two years ago and Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez reminded persons that it was not a loan but a grant from the UAE, which his government is grateful for. PM Gonzalez explained to residents the huge cut in cost for electricity as a result of this solar hybrid power plant. In the battery. The battery technology is developing is not yet perfect. And it will become cheaper as time goes by. And while we need the diesel. If something were to happen to that and push come to shove, we ain't going to have problems where we don't get any electricity in Union. It is going to save us annually about $500,000 in fuel costs importing fuel. It means that we have to sell less. We don't have to sell as much planting and edos and okra and cucumber for the money for the fuel. We can take that money and put it somewhere else. The Prime Minister is hopeful that his government will reach the 2020 target of generating 80% of its power needs across SVG. Meanwhile, Director of the Grenadine Affairs, Edwin Snag, expressed gratitude and thanked residents for their patience during the construction of the plant. To, is to thank my neighbors and the neighbors of Vinlec for, for their patience and I thank them for their tolerance of the dust and grime and the consistent noise as what it wasn't easy, you know. You can sleep any day here when they're pumping and driving them prizes from morning until night. But this is the end product. Head of the energy unit, Ellsworth Dacon, described the commissioning of the solar plant as a milestone which signals that SVG is well on its way to becoming independent with the use of indigenous energy sources.
Other remarks at a commission ceremony came from Chairman of the Board of Directors of Vinlec, René Baptiste. The students of the Mary Hutchinson and Stephanie Brown Primary Schools and the Cultural Conquerors provided the entertainment at the commissioning ceremony. Reporting for SVG TV News, Larissa Pogsley Kidd. A technical mission from the Food and Agriculture Organization is currently visiting SVG. Land Administration Specialist with the FAO Stephanie Helder Alexander met earlier today with officials of the Ministry of Agriculture at the Ministry's conference room in Kingstown. A news release from the Ministry of Agriculture Communication Unit said the technical mission has as its objectives discussing and validating operational procedures of the proposed land bank project, training key staff and producing operational guidelines. The Land Bank Project is an initiative of the Food and Agriculture Organization United National Sub-Regional Office for the Caribbean. The project, which is being implemented across the Windward Island territories of Grenada, St. Lucia and St. Vincent and the Grenadines, is meant to boost agricultural production and reduce food importation in the sub-region. Over the next two weeks, a team of recruiters from the Royal Navy will be conducting interviews with young Vincentians who applied for placement in the Navy in various fields. The recruitment delegation met with Minister of Foreign Affairs Sir Louis Straker yesterday as he welcomed them to SVG during a short ceremony. Sir Louis told the delegation that his ministry is appreciative of the meaningful relation SVG has with the Royal Navy, from which young Vincentians continue to benefit. The Royal Navy has played a significant role in the uh, opportunities being offered to our young people, not only in terms of employment, but in terms of being able to have the opportunity to serve in an area where they can have uh, skills that would fit them for life. It's a wonderful opportunity, and I may say, in the words of someone that you are familiar with, never have so many owed so much to so few. Head of the Royal Navy recruitment team, William Adams, said he has no doubt that the various skills sought from young Vincentians will be a boost to the Navy. The Royal Navy has a long tradition of recruiting high-caliber young men and women from the Eastern Caribbean Islands, especially St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The Royal Navy team are eager to start their recruiting tasks with the hope of helping many young people fulfill and achieve their own individual aspirations. SVG's High Commissioner to the United Kingdom, Senior Lewis, is optimistic that the batch of recruits will make SVG proud. I am very confident that this recruitment program, like those in the past, will be a success. Our nationals who have already entered the Navy have, as I understand it, provided good service and as a byproduct, made our country proud. I believe that those who have applied for this particular recruitment program will be equally good. Persons who have been shortlisted are expected to travel to the UK for three months training. The finalists who will compete this, in this year's Junior Calypso and Soca competition were announced today by the Carnival Development Corporation in the primary CDC. In the primary school's Junior Calypso competition, Christian Lillichris Christopher is expected to face challenges from Zonika Wilkinson and Gavisha Andrews of the Kingston Anglican School. Omari Cupid of the Fairhall Government, Khalid Lewis of the Calder Government, Shanika Archibald of the Greggs Government, Matthew John of the Stubbs Government, and Anella Hamilton of the New Prospect Primary. The secondary school's category of the Junior Calypso competition will see eight competitors battling for the crown. Christiana Christopher and Tia Wiley will compete for the Thomas Saunders Secondary. Angelica Cork of the Trumaca Secondary, Ronella Lavier of the West St. George Secondary, Christopher Bacchus of the St. Martin Secondary, Bevan Batiste, Grenon Nero and Dalen Nero will all represent the Sandy Bay Secondary. In the Junior Calypso Soka Monarch competition, defending Monarch Tishika Andrews is expected to face off with seven challengers including siblings Christiana Christopher of the Thomas Saunders Secondary and Christian Christopher of the Leu Government. 
The other challengers are Tafari Samuel of the Kingston Preparatory School, Shanika Archibald of the Greggs Government School, Brennan Nero of the Sandy Bay Secondary, DeAndre Simmons of the St. Martin Secondary, LaDonna Free of West St. George Secondary. The Junior Calypso and Soka competition will take place on Tuesday, July 2nd at Carnival City, Victoria Park. Through ambition and determination, one can achieve anything. That's the advice given to students at the Buckerman Bay Secondary School from Area Representative Sir Louis Straker at a handing over ceremony at the school today. Fourteen whiteboards and several cricket equipment were handed over to the school to aid in the academic and sporting development of the students. The whiteboards were donated by the investors of the Buckerman Bay Resort, giving advice meant to motivate the students, Sir Louis said all children are blessed with intelligence and unlimited potential which they must seek to harness. Using the example of his life and that of a close friend of his, Sir Louis told the students if they work hard, they will achieve and make themselves, their family and their school proud. Take it from here, realizing what is happening in the community and across, across there, and you want to make, put your school on the map. You can do it, and I encourage you to do it. And so with those words, I hope that I have given you a sense of motivation, inspiration, that you will do your best. Whatever your failures have been in the past, there's a song that goes, failure is not final with the master. So if you have failed in the past, that is not final. Pick yourselves up. Get in your books. Do the best you can. Have an aim, an ambition. Where you see I am now, you can be the, I'm going out just now. And we are depending on one of you to take my place, not only as Deputy Prime Minister, but as Prime Minister in this country of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I encourage you. And I hope that you would do your best to achieve the great heights. Also giving words of encouragement to the students was the investor of the Buckerment Bay Resort, Kelly Glass. Glass said the hospitality industry is diverse and presents many opportunities for professionals. He encouraged the students to develop a spirit of discipline and stay focused to make their dreams come true. So there's just a wealth of different jobs and a lot of opportunity in this hospitality industry. So I want you all to be thinking that, I mean, not everyone will get a job over here, but there's going to be a lot more hotels built in St. Vincent in the future. So as an option, when you're thinking of your career, if it's finance, if it's engineering, whatever it is, there is an aspect of that in the hospitality industry. So what I would ask you to do, and I just reiterate what Barry said, it's all about, it's about discipline, it's about hard work, which is what everybody that's been successful and you guys here that are getting good results in your exams, hard work and focus. They're the really important things for you young ones now. So going ahead from here, I, do, I want you to think of all the different things that are available in that industry. You might have to learn to speak another language. We'll have guests from Italy and, and, and Germany and Romania and all these other places will come here because we have the airlift into the airport. Meanwhile, principal of the Buckerment Bay Secondary School, Godwin Martin, expressed gratitude for the donation. He said the whiteboards are a proven educational tool and promised that they will be put to good use. Healthy reefs support healthy life on land and park ranger in the National Parks, Rivers and Beaches Authority, Stanley Walker, is appealing to Vincentians to play a role in preserving this important natural resource. He made this appeal as the National Parks, Rivers and Beaches Authority, in collaboration with the Fisheries Department, conducted a water testing exercise with science students at the Central Leeward Secondary School. Walker said substances such as phosphates and nitrates are found in runoff from washing and in many fertilizers. He said these substances speed up the growth of plants both on land and in the ocean. The park ranger said this reaction can be devastating for the coral reef. Phosphates and nitrates speed up growth, the growth of plants, and in the in the in the. Uh, 
um, along the coral reef we do have what we call algae okay and those algae they compete with the corals and, and they can even with fast growth from the phosphate and the nitrate have a negative impact on the reef and we do not want that because we want to have a healthy reef so too much of phosphate and nitrate means it would speed up the growth of the algae and cause a negative effect on the coral okay so we want to have a good balance walker said that every vincentian regardless of where they live have a role to play in preserving the coral reef we are asking our farmers to practice good farming habits, practices, you know, householders, everyone to manage your waste so that we can have less run into the, into the ocean because, you know, it could cause problems in the future. Okay. We want to have a healthy reef. Now, Lots of communities there inland, and some people don't see the relation with what they do inland to, to what happened here at the coast. But so, so we want everyone to understand that whatever you do, it affects down at the coast. So we want responsible, you know, living among among everyone in the way we do our farming, the way we manage our waste, so we all can have a healthier life, greener lives, healthier society.